Aloha and welcome to the 11th installment of the POD podcast. Uh, as always, my name is Reverend Jonathan Barlow G. Uh, I'll be your host. And uh, I'm doing an open ended AMA session with uh, Andrus Lux again. It'll be the. Uh, uh the eighth such uh installment with him uh and the theme of this one is going to be time travel so it's not exactly an ask me anything uh it it would be the eighth ask me anything but the sixth of uh such with andrus lux uh great patron and 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 friend to the to the podcast so uh, he's given me seven questions um, about time travel, generally speaking, uh, that I'll now read uh, his questions and my replies to. And uh, as always, I hope you enjoy. And if you do, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe as YouTube dictates. Uh, we all must. Our benevolent dictator, YouTube's algorithms, uh, dictate that we must all like, share, and subscribe. So let me get right to the first question. Is time travel possible? This is a truly fascinating question. The modern argument runs as such. If time travel is at all possible, then it may be relatively certain that at some point it will be mastered. And so, if time travel is possible, then it is likely already happening right now. Hence the slogan, what do we want? Time travel. When do we want it? It's irrelevant implies that once the first person travels through time, they will effectively step outside of the linear and tropic time stream and enter into a realm of eternal timelessness, from which they may reemerge at any other point in the time stream. Insofar as this realm of eternal timelessness already exists now, if someone were to enter it in the future, they would be able to access and ultimately occupy all points in the time stream simultaneously, thus becoming omnitemporal. Such a person should already exist at all times if it is possible for them to come into existence at any point in the future time stream. Some theories about this relate to reincarnation of some souls in a chronologically backward direction through time, but these theories are still in utero and not yet well fleshed out. On the other hand, there is that part of the modern argument that runs, if time travel is at all possible, it would be prevalent already. This is called one of the Fermi paradoxes. And since it does not appear to be so now, it must therefore be impossible. Time travel is, thus, believed to be one of those rare, exactly either-or, binary polarity outcomes. It is either possible, in which case it is almost completely certain, or else it is absolutely impossible, in which case it should also be entirely unimaginable. The argument for time travel being possible is that it can be imagined. The argument against it is that old canard about airplanes. If God had intended us to fly, he'd have given us wings. It remains likely that if people survive long enough to do so, we will figure out the science to unlock time travel. It's only a question of survival, and beyond that, just a matter of time. And her second question. 
is mental only time travel more practical than physical slash mechanical? Yes, of course. Any kind of experiment that can be done in the laboratory of the mind will be more cost effective and less resource consuming than replicating an experiment to demonstrate the results in real life. That is why we have the language of mathematics as a means to prove ideas without needing to build them out physically. For example, E equals MC squared is only an equation and as such a harmless thought experiment. The atomic bomb, on the other hand, is an example of people realizing this science as a material object. I do not mean to wholly equate time travel with the atomic bomb, but the threat of people weaponizing time travel also indicates that the method of reasoning it out mathematically long prior to engineering it may be preferable to provide time for any potential conflicts to subside. If time travel is possible, it obeys physical laws we do not yet fully understand as such. Likewise, once time travel is understood, if possible, then those artificial legal dictates of mankind's fleeting ethics will likely be imposed onto it as well. The sort of ethical questions time travel will pose should definitely be addressed long in advance of its being brought about as a material reality, and hypothetical examples of mental-only time travel experiments should be examined thoroughly to determine the best course of action for humanity relative to the concept of time travel. Ergo, is it safe? And etc. Andrus' third question. What does mental-only time travel look like? Mental-only time travel from the outside looks like meditation. From the inside, it looks like astral projection of the Atman, or light body, sometimes perceived as connected to the physical body by an infinite-length, umbilical-like silver cord. The mind's eye, thus projected, does not need to obey any of the limits placed onto us as material bodies by the laws of physics. It has limitless freedom to explore its imagination. However, if one chooses to hone their focus down from the realm of infinite possibilities in pure potential, and to concentrate on remote viewing, only a certain reality at a certain location in space at a certain moment in time, one will be able to instantly broadcast their perception, even to distances it would take photons, traveling at light speed, millions, even billions, of Earth years to reach. Thus, the ego, or local mind, may broadcast itself through the omnipresent energy field of hyperspace, the non-local, or universal mind and arrive at accurate observations about a distant location in space, or even a different era of time. This process allowed the ancients to make advanced observations about the astral cycles of local space-time, and to predict all the alignments along them, as triggering space weather events, a feat modern science has yet to fully comprehend. His fourth question. Can you explain the world timelines? Well, let's look at modern so-called string theory and its proposition of some 11 or so possible dimensions. According to string theory, in the Big Bang event, only three dimensions of space expanded into our local universe, but there may be evidence, in the form of subquantum scale Calabi U shapes, of multiple other dimensions possible in our local cosmos. 
Now, each dimension is a scalar pair of opposite directions, such as height being up and down. But in our local universe, the fourth dimension is experienced solely as the single direction of time from past to future. So if there are around 11 possible dimensions or 22 possible directions present in our local cosmos, but only three and a half dimensions or seven directions are active in our local universe, we can posit that enough extra dimensions exist to provide for two other complete three-dimensional universes that also share their direction of motion along the same timeline as our own local universe. <clears throat> In short, string theory may imply the presence of two different universes next door to our own, all sharing the same direction of time. This is permitted in so-called black hole cosmology, where multiple baby universes can form inside a singularity from multiple overlapping gravity wells inside of a single parent black hole. So we see there may be a future universe traveling the same direction in time, but ahead of our own, and a past universe traveling slower than our own, along the same basic timeline as our own local universe. Which of these may be the better and which a worse possible universe compared to our own may be subjective individually, but it seems reasonable to propose the faster universe to be phi bound and the slower to be pi bound in the traditional sense as Fibonacci and logarithmic spirals respectively. So the slower universe, which may be slower due to having greater mass, has its gravitational effect on the trajectory of the faster, curving it around in a spiral, while our local universe exists, as it were, between them. If in fact these faster and slower neighboring universes to our own are indeed better and worse, our own middle timeline may not have as long to exist as either of these others individually, let alone of them both combined together. And his fifth question. What technology is required to time travel? For mental-only time travel experiments, only a biological neural network capable of intuitive imagination and logical deduction is required. If we intend to drag our bodies along with us, there are multiple different methods, each with multiple different factors, each leading to multiple different possible results. For example, say you want to transport your bodily vessel from point A in space-time to point B in space-time, where point B is chronologically earlier than point A, using a wormhole to join these points. Well, depending on the conditions, length, and duration of the wormhole, one may walk through it immediately, like a portal, or require a suit to survive, assuming the airless conditions of outer space, or require a larger ship for longer duration voyages. Another option may be to beam to the target destination as a signal of pulsed data on a stream of tachyon anti-energy. This possibility is supported by the, as of yet still hypothetical, premise of the tachyonic anti-telephone that can send a signal back in time prior to its being sent. Promising research along these lines has been done very recently using quantum computing to send a signal through a simulated wormhole. 
Such a telephone call will be the first bridge across the time barrier using entirely artificial, mechanical means. Again, possible reverse chronological reincarnation may account for this same effect in the biological domain. However, this effect, being nearly impossible to demonstrate material evidence for, remains merely a fringe concept. And his sixth question. Do you believe the government is developing these technologies at present? The term government, at least here in America, implies some method for redress of grievances from we the people, its citizenry. A deep state cartel combining long-term intelligence community agents and assets with military industrial defense department generals and private sector CEOs does exist. And in order to justify their annual black budgets, they often do some highly ethically questionable research and development experimental projects. I would hope by now we all know the CIA's history with MK Ultra. The research by this deep state into psi or effects concerning the mind did not end with MK Ultra but was picked up again under presidents Reagan and H W Bush though discontinued under Clinton as Project Stargate. This is often confused with the satire, The Men Who Stare at Goats, although the New Earth Army shown in that film was formed prior to the involvement of the U.S. CIA under Stargate. Since the remote viewing practiced by the agents of Stargate is essentially identical to the astral travel of New Age theosophists, and since such out-of-body mental projection can transport one instantly to distances many billions of light years away. It can be considered a larval form of mental only time travel experiment being publicly performed by the international globalist deep state. According to the alleged Montauk project disclosures, it was the mind of the person sitting in the now infamous Montauk chair between two massive active electromagnetic coils that acted to control the target destination of the time tunnel this formed. Then his seventh and final question. What are your own ideas on the subject? My own musings largely deal with time travel trajectories and temporal topography. In other words, I would map out the terrain of time and plot a course across this for various forms of time travel experiment. For example, say you want to leave location A at time A1 and arrive in location A at time B1 where B1 is before A1. This would be one sort of computation, excluding the spatial distance metric. For another example, say you want to leave location A at time A1 and arrive in location B at time B1, where, again, B1 occurs before A1. This, then, would require a spatial and temporal metric to be combined. Also, the duration of the trip is determined by the weight of one's baggage. If one performs a time tunnel experiment mentally only, it requires much less energy to attain results. If one wishes to transport their body to a target destination as well, they may do so through a portal a wormhole, using a ship 
to house their body and or as a pulsed beam of energy as data reassembled at the destination. All these models may be used separately or combined variously, and each requires its own subset type of time travel equations. For example, consider the simplest form of such a trip where a person steps directly through a time portal as though it were simply a doorway. Say this person wanted to travel to their same location, no distance metric, one second before they left, a minimal duration metric. So the duration of the portal would be zero. The duration of the jump would be negative one second. And the location for the portal would be the same location as the target destination. The expression for this as a time travel equ equation would be bracket parentheses x1 comma y1 comma z1 parentheses plus parentheses lowercase t zero parentheses times or multiplied by parentheses uppercase t one parentheses close bracket equals bracket parentheses x1 comma y1 comma z1 parentheses minus parentheses lowercase t zero parentheses times or multiplied by parentheses uppercase t minus one parentheses close bracket where the coordinates x, y, and z describe three-dimensional space. If there were a distance metric applied, their subsums would differ, though here they do not. Where the first additive sum, lowercase t, measures the duration of the wormhole or time tunnel, and where the second multiplicative sum, uppercase t, represents the duration of the jump. Or for another more complex example, say a person wanted to beam themselves back in time to visit their grandfather before they were born. Well, one would need a time during the lifetime of their grandfather and a place, the location their grandfather lived in. If one were to beam themselves there, they would need to calculate the trajectory of this beam such that its apex or furthest point outside of the mainstream timeline should roughly correspond to the middle of their trip. This means if you live in 2012 Florida and your grandfather lived in 1936 Ohio, your trip's apex point would be in or around 1976 at some location, likely exactly, between Florida and Ohio. This apex point signifies the traveler's point of least influence on the mainstream timeline, and therefore the mainstream timeline's point of maximum influence on the traveler, as temporal turbulence or entropic resistance. One would then, moreover, need a means of beaming themselves there and of reassembling themselves into a bodily form at their target destination as well. However, if one broadcasts this beam outside of, rather than through, the mainstream timeline, one will encounter less direct resistance overall. Likewise, if one uses a wormhole as a doorway to simply walk through, there is no need for a ballast or counterweight to swap the matter energy between the origin point and the target destination. With a wormhole, one doesn't disappear here and reappear there, as with teleportation by pulsed energy beaming. Microgravitational pulsed echolocation is more useful in temporal radar. And those are... Anders' questions for 
this 11th episode of the podcast, the POD podcast. I've been your host, uh, Reverend Jonathan Barlow G. And uh, if you would like to uh, follow me on social media, uh, I'm Ben Padia, B-E-N-P-A-D-I-A-H, on most platforms. Uh, you can find the Pythagorean Order of Death, uh, a group that I've uh, hosted on several platforms as well, independently of me. And uh, look for some published works of mine coming out soon. And uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I hope you've all had a wonderful uh, little time watching and or listening to this. And um, that's about it for me. Have a good one. Peace.